Hi, today we will be learning about rational numbers and irrational numbers in the real number system. You will need a notebook or your binder, scratch paper, and then something to write with. Please pause the video if you don't have that uh, right now. All right, we're going to look at a brain pop video. While you do that, um, you can make a T chart of rational number and irrational numbers. And as you watch the video, you can record the definition of each. You can record some examples. Um, you can also find um, a copy of this in Canvas modules if you would like to write on that as well. So again, if you would rather that, go ahead and pause the video and under Canvas modules and to, under today's date, Thursday, August 20th. Beep, 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 beep. Rah, beep, 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 beep. I wasn't, um, it's, it's, it's for school. Dear Tim and Moby, what's the deal with rational numbers? Are there irrational numbers too? From Gil. Well, a rational number is any number that can be written in fraction form. Three thirds, five eighths, one half, or nine tenths. Mathematics organizes numbers into different sets. Whole numbers are positive numbers without decimals. Whole numbers also include any fractions that represent the whole number, like, say, 20 fifths. The integers group includes both whole numbers and their negatives. As you can see from this diagram, whole numbers are included in the set of all integers. Rational numbers are any number that can be expressed as a over b, where both a and b are integers, and b does not equal zero. Decimals can be rational too. As long as a decimal is either terminating or repeating, it is a rational number. Terminating just means that the decimal comes to an end, like, say, 7.892. A repeating decimal is one that goes on forever, like one-third, which, as a decimal, is 0 0.33333, and so on, to infinity. So one-third goes on forever, but since it's predictable, it's a rational number. Decimals that don't repeat and don't end are called irrational numbers. You've probably heard of pi. Pi is often rounded to 22 sevenths or 3.14, but in reality, those are just approximations. Pi is 3.14159265353, and, and so on. It keeps going on like that, never repeating and never ending. Pi is an irrational number. At least theoretically, pi can be written as a decimal, but not a fraction. The term rational contains the word ratio. And a ratio is the same as a fraction, so that can help you remember what a rational number is. That's any number that can be written as a fraction. There you go. Oh. oh okay. Why, sure, Moby, I'd love to go to the movies with you. And Mr. Dinosaur come too? What do you mean? I'm not getting carried away. All right, so we saw examples of rational and irrational numbers. So a rational number is a number. Oh, let's see. All right, let me select my pen and we'll fill it in. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So a rational number, let's spray down here. It's a number that can be written as a fraction. And we've seen repeating um, fractions that go on and on and on. And the example in the video was one third, and that repeating, whoops, and there's its equivalent repeating, one third, three tenths, a third repeating, right? Point three repeating. So it's a number that can be written as a fraction. 
Okay, an irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a fraction. And the example in the video that they gave was pi, right? It was 3.4 and then it is not random. So it's very, it's irrational, right? Um, and then we'll see other ones like the square root of 10, okay? It's a decimal that goes on and on and on forever without a pattern, okay? So 0 0.251, 2.51, this does have a pattern and it would repeat on. So it has a pattern and it goes on forever. However, an irrational number, it it does have a decimal, but it cannot be written as a fraction. So it does not have a pattern. All right. Let me go to select. All right. So together, we're going to do, we're going to, do an example together, sets of real numbers. And again, you will need your uh, sheet of paper that you're writing your notes down. And this is in Canvas. You do not need to go there. Again, you're going to be able to see my screen and we'll do this together. All right, here we are. So this is sets of real numbers. We're going to arrange the sets of numbers to show their relationships. Okay, so we have irrational, rational, whole, integers, and real. All right, and this is the real number system. Okay, so since it is the real number system, let's go ahead and start with this large circle. So on your sheet of paper, go ahead and draw a large circle with a number real. These are all real numbers. So we're going to include all of these in here, right? And so in the video, we learned how can we place these? Is irrational and ra rational the same? No, they're not. So rational number is not an irrational number. They do not overlap, but they are both real numbers, okay? And I'm going to make our rational number larger. Why am I doing that? Good, because we know whole numbers and integers are rational numbers. So which one should we place next? Good, integers. Then, of course, a whole number goes here, like we saw in the video. And then let's check and make sure we're correct. Oh. Let's see here. Let's move that. It's very particular. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now we're correct. All right. They didn't want irrational touching the edge. I guess they thought it was outside. All right. Step two. We are going to move these numbers to the correct spot in the diagram, okay? Now, you should have this on your paper and labeled a rational, rational integers and whole number. And you are going to write these numbers in their most specific category. So let's start with negative 20. Okay, negative 20 is an integer. That's the most specific category. We know that integer is also Negative 20 is also a rational number. But the most specific category is integers. And then we have 13. And we have 0. And 2 are whole numbers, right? 3 fourths is a fraction, okay? 
since it can be written as a fraction, we learn that that is a rational number. Okay, we have negative 8 tenths. Negative 8 tenths can be written as a fraction. Negative 8 over 10. Let's see. I wonder if we need to make this circle a little bit bigger. All right, what do we learn about pi in the video? Good. Pi is a decimal without a pattern. A decimal without a pattern is irrational. It cannot be written as a fraction. And then 7.45, and that's repeating. So it has a pattern, and it's repeating, so that is a rational number. Okay, so we haven't seen anything like this before, okay? We have not learned what the square root of 2 is or the square root of 5. So I'm going to show you the calculator here, all right? And we're going to put in the square root Oops. Okay, so they want the 2 first and the square root. All right, so this is the square root of 2. Do you see a pattern in the decimal? There is not a pattern, and it does keep going. The calculator can just hold so many numbers. So this decimal goes on and on and on without a pattern. So without a pattern, it is an irrational number. So this square root of 2 cannot be written as a fraction. What about the square root of 5? 5. It is 2.2, and then it keeps going on and on and on, right? It, do you see a pattern? No. So that is an irrational number. Let's go ahead and check. And then we're correct. All right. So you are now going to have some independent practice where you're going to be able to check your work, and when you're done, you're going to mark as done when complete. Okay, so you'll go into Canvas, just where we were, go to Canvas Modules, complete the page that says Thursday 820 Real Number System Sorting, um, and then if you're watching it from home, you don't have to worry about there. So let me show you where this is in Canvas. All right, so here is the, this is where you're going to go, the real number system sorting. Click here, and then you are going to sort, and you'll be able to check, and you'll know if you're correct by the key here. Okay, and then when you're done, let me actually, there'll be a button here for you that says mark is done. All righty? And then there is an extra practice after this. Um, in modules, right here, if you go to the lesson, this is where you got the video. So you'll have the video, and then here is extra practice if you would like it, along with the key. And that's all for today.